This video is sponsored by the following people. Please click the links in the description below. Yes, now this, I'm, I'm going to create some controversy here. And this is one of the myths that I think I've written a blog about and if I haven't, I'm going to. I'm Graham Clark. I'm a metallurgist by profession and I run Clark Knives in rural Wiltshire where we run knife making courses and we also run a heat treatment service for knife makers and we make Damascus steel billets which we sell out to other knife makers. You've got to understand the need. You've got to understand what the knife's being used for. If you're a bushcrafter, for instance, I can imagine, I mean, I don't go bushcrafting. I'm not my age, I'm not going to go out there. I don't even go camping anymore, I mean, blimey. Even the hotel's got to be three star before I go out of the house now. So bushcrafting is a bit foreign to me. But I can imagine that a bushcrafting knife is going to take a bit of abuse. Uh, it's going to get bashed. You might be hacking with it. You might be cutting with it. You might be chopping with it. And I would have thought that for the general purpose, a carbon steel knife is very, very good. And for a couple of reasons. First, Firstly, you can edge quench it. So you can just edge quench part of the knife. You just quench half the knife into the oil, the cutting edge, and you harden that. The back of the knife will then stay almost like a, a springy, spring form steel. So if you end up, you've got to cut the tire off your Land Rover, you don't want to be doing that with a stainless steel knife because as soon as you start using it as a tire lever, you're going to snap it in half. Whereas if you've edge quenched a, a carbon steel knife, that's perhaps slightly less likely to happen. You, you look at an American Bladesmith Society cut and bend test, they're going to bend your knife 90 degrees. It's allowed to crack up to one third of the way through the actual blade, but the rest of it mustn't snap in half. Carbon steel, you can do it with. You can't do that with stainless steel because it's air hardening. No matter how slowly you, you sort of quench it, you're still going to air, you know, if you cool it in air, it will come up hard. So you can't keep the spine of the knife soft. Getting the spine of the knife soft without softening the cutting edge afterwards, again, I suppose it could be done, but I wouldn't like to have to set up the equipment to do it with. Not an easy job. If you're looking for that kind of knife, carbon steel is very good. I think carbon steels are far better suited to forging as well. So if you're a bladesmith as opposed to a knife maker and you're forging your blades, again, carbon steels forge very well. Stainless steels, they're not nice to forge. Stainless steel itself, sorry, is not nice to forge. So forging out of stainless steel. Yeah, I see a few people who make stainless steel knives and they hot texture the surface. You know, they take a, a bit of flat ground steel and beat the living shit out of the surface with a hammer that's got notches and cuts in it and they can make pretty patterns on the outside. Yeah, that works quite well. But, you know, again, if you sort of overheat that stainless steel, you've now got to normalize it again. That's not quite so easy. The whole normalizing process on carbon steels is better. If you're just a knife maker, so you want to take a piece of steel, you want to profile and, and grind your knife to shape, put a handle on it, somewhere along the process, you send it to me for heat treatment. That's a different story. I don't actually see the advantage of carbon steels there. I would use stainless steel every time, particularly for kitchen knives, culinary knives, even hunting knives. You know, people are deer stalkers. I would think a stainless steel knife is ideal for that because you get the heat treatment right. You can put a little bit of uh, ductility into that. And yes, I know they can take a bit of abuse if you're chopping through bones or sinews or something, but it shouldn't be that much. I made an awful lot of hunting knives in the time I lived in South Africa for guys that would go out and butcher quite large animals out in the bush. Never had a trouble. So stainless steel knives is more for your, I would think, for your hunting and your culinary knives, powder met steels, that's just, I don't, I don't know, I, I think the only real advantage of powder met steels, the owner's now got bragging rights that my knife is better than yours. It will perform better. I mean, you can go out hunting for a week with that thing and I don't think you'd have to resharpen it, but that's probably one of the few advantages I would think, although I do like powder met steels, I just don't like working with them. Now, this, I'm, I'm going to create some controversy here. Yes. And this is one of the myths that I think I've written a blog about, and if I haven't, I'm going to. Despite what other people might tell you, hardness is not everything. I'll give you a story. Just this last week, somebody sent me a whole pile of cutthroat razors for heat treatment. They were made out of stainless steel. And he asked me for a hardness of 63 to 64. Well, first of all, the material that he sent me doesn't go that hard, even when it's fully hard. And secondly, all I could see was absolute danger if I sort of acceded to his requirements. So I gave him a ring. Why do you want this hard? Oh, yeah, well, they're cutthroat razors, and the harder they are, they'll, they'll stay sharper longer. I can see other difficulties. First of all, now imagine it's a cutthroat razor. You, you, you normally hollow grind those and that edge is thin. You know, you might grind the edge of a culinary knife down to half a millimetre. If you're making a decent cutthroat razor, you're, you're grinding that edge down to 0.1 of a millimetre or less. It's way for thin. You make that too hard, you sneeze on it, it's going to snap and crack it like, it, like a little shard of glass. But you want a bit of ductility in there. Second thing is, they're made out of stainless steel. They're full of chrome carbides. They don't have to be at maximum hardness to maintain a sharp edge because they're full of chrome carbides. 
carbide. And I suggested to this gentleman that perhaps 59 to 61 would be a better hardness. And when I explained where it could cause a danger, he fully understood. I hadn't thought about that. He said, I hadn't thought about the, the strength of the cutting edge. So you have to think about the cutting edge you're using. What is that cutting edge going to do? And are you putting that edge in danger by specifying a hardness that's too high? Most of stainless steels, as hardened, are only going to come up somewhere between 60 and 62, 63. As opposed to carbon steels, as hardened, will come up 65, 66. Those are not hardnesses you can use in either material. You've got to be able to temper them back enough. Now, it's fairly well understood that temper bring below about 150 degrees centigrade isn't going to do anything. Once you get to 150, you're starting to temper back. You're starting to relieve some of the high stresses that are in that hardened piece of material. And the stresses are going to start to be relieved. Your hardness is going to start coming down and your toughness is going to go up. It's getting that compromise, getting the right compromise for the application you want. So a, a kitchen knife, a culinary knife, can be a few points harder than a hunting knife, in my opinion, because it's probably gonna get less abuse. Although I'm sure there are some chefs who like to chop bones in half as well. In that case, he wants a slightly different hardness. But you know, if you purely want a cutting edge and you're not cutting difficult materials, then hey presto, go slightly harder. So your stainless steel, for instance, you know, 59, 61 is a very good hardness for a culinary knife. Uh, although people will still specify 61, but I, I think 59 to 61 works extremely well. Most carbon steel knives, especially out in a hunting situation, 58, 60, will work well unless you're using a, a, a good tool steel like O1. O1's got those extra carbides in there which help hold the cutting edge. With O1 you can go a few points higher. Even for a hunting knife, 60, 61. Yeah, I wouldn't like to go much above 61 for any knife. But again, it's understanding the application. And if anybody's watching this video and they really don't understand what I'm talking about, pick up the phone, give me a call, I'll talk you through it. And we'll, between us, we'll come up with something that's gonna suit your application. What hardness do you normally aim for for your knives when heat treating? Do you agree that 60 HR see it's enough hardness for your knives put your feedback and your questions in the comments section below check out our new shirts available from our official uk blade show shop massive thank you to our sponsors who made this series possible subscribe to our channel if you want to watch more knife making videos we'll see you in the next video